Hello everybody and welcome to Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. I'm Jack and I'm here with the 8th round of the first Limitless Qualifier. Uh, so far we are 4-2, no sorry we're 4-3. Um, so we've only got uh, a couple of lives left unfortunately. This time we're going to be against a Pikaram deck. This is one of the, uh, I think it's the only Pikaram I play during the tournament which is interesting. Uh, it's a deck that's done fairly well in this meta. It's got the second most... Uh, it's the second most CP earning deck after ADPization. Uh, so I was expecting to play more than one, honestly. Um, but that being said, it does have a bit of a sketchier ADPization compared to decks like Baby Blounds and stuff. So I can see why people maybe strayed off of it a little bit. We're going first, and our turn is pretty standard. We have an energy for the ADP, uh, which is basically all you want. In tag team matchups, you can ADP for one, you can ADP for two. It really depends on how your opponent sets their board up. Um, but as long as we have the option to do both, it's really, really good. We also do hit our Swell, which is nice, because I can see his list, and I can see that he only plays Thunder Mountain. So that's huge. That means he can never get that Thunder Mountain out. That's one of the really key cards that we've been able to um, avoid being an issue for us, which is very, very nice. So yeah, we're just going to attach an Intrepid Sword, and he's going to kick off with a Stellowish and a Volkner, probably uh, starting to build his board up. Interestingly, uh, his list only plays one Dedenne GX, which uh, is really useful to know a little bit later on in the game. Uh, that means I can make a little bit of a questionable, pl questionable play, uh, but I know that he, that he only plays one Dedenne, so uh, that's a really good information. He does stamp us, which is okay. It me we lose our Guzhala, and we have used two tag calls. I wanted to use the tag calls to thin early. Uh, he decides to use a stamp early as well. He does have a second later on, so or a, a second in his deck at least. So it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, my turn is pretty rubbish because of that. Uh, at least initially, I'm going to have to probably the Dene here. Do have the catcher though. Uh, that can hopefully. Uh, well, I decide to use it to try and stall something out because we don't want the Jirachi active. Unfortunately, we do hit the tails, um, which isn't great, but nonetheless, uh, we have so many gusting effects in the deck. Hopefully, we can get some more later on. We do lose a custom catcher at the same time, though. I do hit one of my switches, though, so I can try and Stellowish out of this, uh, which is nice. Unfortunately, we don't have access to um, one of our special energy that will mean we can Dedenne, uh, that will mean we can alter creation for two energy. This turn currently, the only draw supporter we have right now is Marnie from this Stellowish. I do go back and just double check what he did, uh, just to remind myself of the kind of hand he may be representing, whether I want a Marnie or not. Um, nearly end up conceding there. And then I decide not to, I decide to go for the quick ball. And, you know, we could have Marnied, but he didn't rep he didn't do anything after he used the Dedenne, so he could have a fairly strong hand, he could have a fairly weak hand, it's hard to tell. Uh, but I know this this Absol will get some value. It's going to force a switch or an energy attachment out of him to be able to move this Jirachi, uh, which is really important for him getting the turn to full blitz. It's still quite likely that he will, uh, but nonetheless, it's still really important to try and stall as much as we can. And I go for the Intrepid Sword, and we do hit an out to uh, being able to go for the Goods Haller for the GX attack for two next turn, uh, which is nice. So he does the pretty standard stuff, manages to get himself a Coco, so he is going to be able to uh, get benefit out of one of his Prism Stars. This is one of the best reasons to play Pika Rom, is that it has two incredibly strong Prism Star cards in Coco and Thunder, uh, Thunder Mountain. And he does indeed hit the switch for the Full Blitz as well, um, which is kind of scary to be honest, because, you know, we don't actually represent a knockout right here. Last turn, but unfortunately, uh, if we had, we would have been probably played a seven prize game uh, because he may have never benched another three prize Pokemon. So that's why I decided to try and get the full. I'm taking my time on this decision because it's a pretty big one. Um, I'm really not sure how I want to approach this. There's no, like I said, there's no real way we can actually knock out this. Pika on this turn, not even with Vitality Band plus Shrine. We can't get the Shrine in any way, but even so, uh, we don't have access to being able to knock this out. So I decide to take a risk, go for the ADP line. 
obviously we could just lose here. Um, double E power plus energy actually means that we just lose the game outright. It is a bit of a risk and looking back maybe it was the incorrect play but I don't think I could have won without going for this GX line so I do decide that I think the GX line is the route I have to go down. Obviously he has a four card hand. This is where him only playing one Dedenne uh, I can really lean into that because he doesn't have any like sort of turbo draw. Uh, he basically has to use things like Volkner and his other supporters to try and draw his combo pieces. He doesn't have any, like I say, he doesn't have another Dedenne to try and dig, use these, use some of these Thunder Mountains, uh, E-Powers and stuff like that, sorry. Not Thunder Mountains. Um, you know, he has, he doesn't have access to be, being able to dig, so I just have to take the risk, go for the ADP for two energy, and hopefully uh, we can lean into that, because now our Zacian can pretty easily knock out this Picaron, because, even after resistance, because um, we're doing the extra damage. We'll be taking all of his energy off board, and we only need to take two prizes at that point. So this turn is really, really crucial. If he is able to go for the Tag Bolt, we pretty much lose. If he isn't, um, we're in a pretty good spot. So obviously he goes for his Jirachi line, grabs. Um, well, he, he needs he needs basically a combination of energy plus two E-Powers here to be able to uh, win the game outright. Volkner plus E-Power would do it, so... it. A wide variety of cards actually um, was a bit of a risk here, but he doesn't hit them. He actually has to go for the Zapdos line. Uh, well, he can't even attack with the Zapdos because he can't get the Thunder Mountain down. He attaches to the bench Zara Aura as well. So this Zapdos is just like a free prize for us if we want to take it. Um, that being said, I I think he didn't have a choice in going for the full energy um, to peek on play. He knew that we couldn't knock him out. So I think it was a pretty strong play. Um, again, theoretically, we, I'm taking another risk here in, uh, being able, in just going for the ADP line, but I can't money him. He has a two card hand. He's not representing much at all. Um, he didn't represent much last turn either, and he still needs the same combination. I think I had to kind of take that risk. He does hit the research, of course, as you saw, which means I, I remember being super scared at this point because double E power isn't out of the realms of possibility at all. That being said, I think if I just used my Zacian there, uh, he could have quite easily tag bolted for one and killed my Zacian, and I really wouldn't have had much of a response initially. Uh, though at that point, I probably could have gone for the Marnie to lower his hand size, so maybe. I did take a bit too much of a risk here. Uh, he does go for the energy switch, so I think he's actually going to end up going for the tag bolt here. I think he's got it. Uh, but instead, he actually energy switches to the active to retreat and goes for another full blitz. And this full blitz um, is pretty much him saying he's conceding because I know that I can then uh, just swing with the cessation and take my last three prizes. Um, on reflection, again, a bit of a risk. I knew that he only played one to Dene. And I really leaned into that, and maybe that were, maybe I leaned into it too much, but there were no custom catches. He didn't play customs, so there was no draw from customs. Um, so he was completely relying on pretty much tutoring these cards or, fight, or ripping a supporter. And again, maybe it was too much of a risk, I don't know, but it worked out okay. Um, and yeah, that puts us at 5 and 3 in the tournament. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching, and look out for round 9 of the tournament coming soon.